Hello everyone and welcome to another STAT 437 lecture video. In today's video we are going to be talking about accelerated failure time models. Now an accelerated failure time model is one of the main regression models for fitting continuous time survival data, at least one of the main parametric methods for doing this. And actually what you'll see after today's lecture is that we've already talked about accelerated failure time models, we just haven't named them that yet. So what we'll see is how the theory that we've been discussing can be made into an explicit regression model in sort of the way that we've been alluding to but haven't done yet. And we'll sort of see the details of those models today. And then in the next lecture and the one following that, we'll see in a little bit more detail the theory and then the implementation of these models, right? So nothing is really new today, but I hope that by framing it in this way, it's gonna to start to solidify a lot of those ideas that we've been talking about over the past few lectures. So with that, I'll open up the slides here and we can start talking about accelerated failure time models. So as we saw for several common distributions for the survival time T, we have this situation where if we take the log transform of T, we end up in this location scale form for the model, right? And what I was trying to allude to during the last video was that we can sort of view this as a regression model of sorts, right? Where this mu parameter here is the mean and that's what we really care about. And then we're just left with this sigma w term, which we can think about as sort of an error distribution, right? And so in regression models, we're oftentimes thinking about modeling the mean and then there's some residual error term that we don't really care about specifically, but that is just gonna be you know, left over there, right? And so, with this, this sort of gives rise to what we will call an accelerated failure time model. So if we were interested in introducing covariates, right? So you think about what we do with linear regression. Typically what we say is that the expected value of the mean, if it's a continuous variable, is given by this linear predictor, xi transpose beta, or written as eta. And so if we did this in the case where y is a uh, location scale family, Right, then what we're doing is replacing the mean of y, which is that mu term, with this linear predictor here. Right? And so this is sort of the common regression setup that we're used to seeing. Right? And so we would have the covariate vector times by beta as the linear predictor, and then we have a noise term that we don't really care about, but we know is still there to sort of add the randomness to this. So doing this introduces what we would call an accelerated failure time model. So formally, if we have a time to event variable t, then an accelerated failure time model or an AFT model says that we take y, which is the log transform of t, and it renders it with xi beta, xi transpose beta, plus some error distribution, okay? And so this, this right here sort of is the core of the accelerated failure time model. We're fitting the mean to be based on uh, our covariates of interest. And then wi is going to be an error term that follows a distribution that either we pick the distribution of wi and that implies something about the distribution of t, or we pick the distribution of t. And as we've seen uh, for several common distributions of t, there's going to be an implied uh, distribution for w. Okay. And so the other thing to point out is that wi is going to be a mean zero error distribution. And if you notice, we've sort of absorbed that scale parameter into wi. So its variance isn't one, but it will have mean zero. And the whole non-zero part of the mean is captured in this eta i term here. Okay. So what are some of the properties of AFTs? Well, if you have your AFT, you can sort of rearrange the model to find that time at uh, time i for, for individual i is going to be given by the exponential of that linear predictor times by t0i. And t0i is equal to the exponential of wi, right? And so if you think about this as someone who has a linear predictor equal to zero, right? Then t0i is going to represent um, sort of the baseline time, right? And then individuals' covariates change what eta i is, right? They change this value in here. And you can see that this sort of represents a multiplicative rescaling of that baseline term, right? And so if someone is such that uh, the exponential of eta i is equal to uh, two, for instance, if 
x beta i is equal to 2, well then the uh, survival time here is going to be twice the normal time if they didn't have those covariates. Right? Now, uh, if we consider on the original scale these f0 terms being the, uh, the terms for the w, the, the transform w, then we can also see that we have an implied structure for a different density and survivor functions here. And so in particular, we can look at the density as being the density of that uh, transformed baseline term. Uh, and then you apply that at e to the negative eta times by t, and then multiply that by e to the negative eta. And we'll see this in the next lecture sort of in a little bit more detail. But the similar types of relationships exist for the survivor and the hazard function as well. And so what this means for us is that um, the we can know a lot about the distribution that we're working with uh, based on that underlying error distribution, right? And so this whole model is sort of working in this in this situation where what we're thinking about is scaling our time by some uh, factor that is based on that linear predictor, right? But so anyways, it's, it's, it's nice to know that there's sort of these uh, concrete relationships between the underlying terms and our linear predictors to give us the uh, outcome terms. So as a brief example, we could look at the uh, log normal uh, density here. And so in a standard linear regression, we would take our error term to be normal zero sigma squared. And doing this, uh, implies a log normal distribution for t, right? And so right here we have the density for a log normal distribution, and you can see that it sort of meets those quantities that we talked about, right? It um, it's bounded below at zero, and you can see that it does trail off into uh, the uh, into the tail here, right? It's got a long tail, and so it like this this seems like an okay distribution for survival time. But if you actually um, take a look at its hazard function, the hazard function has this weird shape. Right, And so at first, the hazard function is increasing, and then it decreases afterwards. And so what is that t telling us? Well, it's saying that uh, the probability of instantaneous failure starts off at down at zero, but then it increases rapidly, and then it decreases over time. Right? And so normally, we think about hazard functions as being monotone. We don't normally think about there being a change point in them. And that's because uh, you know, for things where the longer you survive, the more likely you are to survive even further, well, then you would uh, think about the hazard as sort of just decreasing. But for most things, we sort of see an increasing hazard, right? Where you're unlikely to uh, to have your event early on, but as time passes, it becomes more and more likely. And so the log normal is not really necessarily the best accelerated failure time model, but the nice part is that any of the uh, distributions that we've talked about, we can use in place here, okay? And so uh, this is sort of the idea uh, that we were discussing before, and I had written these out, but to remind you, a handful of common distributions that we might take for t are the exponential, the weibull, the log logistic, or the log normal, and all of these can be used as accelerated failure time models with a distribution, with their error distribution uh, corresponding there. And so uh, we had just talked about this log normal, which is going to be appropriate sometimes, but most of the time we're not really going to want to be using it, and instead we might be uh, focused more on, say, the Weibull distribution, where the extreme value distribution gives you a, a more believable hazard function, right? But the basic premise is the same for any of these. All you do is you note that a log transform of t gives you a location scale parameter, and once you are a location scale family, and once you've done that, then you can just fit a standard regression model for that mean, where those covariates can be used to explain the mean in the exact same way that we do for linear regression. Now, we can't actually use ordinary least squares. We have to use a sort of more complicated uh, procedure because of censoring and because of the error distribution. But overall, that's the same idea, right? And we're not actually going to worry about the implementation of it because we can just use pre-existing software. Right? So that's essentially everything for accelerated failure time models. I know it was uh, fairly brief, but that's because we've spent so much time building to this point. Right? And so those regression models that I've been talking about with the log linear models, those are just accelerated failure time models. That's all it is. So when you see AFTs out in, in uh, the literature, all it is is it's a regression model where you've taken the log transform of your survival time and you've said that's going to follow a location scale distribution. And then uh, by doing that, what you're seeing is that 
that linear predictor, what it's doing is it's multiplicatively scaling the survival time, right? And so that's sort of the key property of them in, in the interpretation there is that you have your baseline survival time, and then we allow for uh, the, the covariates to scale that multiplicatively. Right, so AFTs are regression models for location scale families. They represent a rescaling of the uh, baseline time to event, right? And so uh, again, if you have covariates that make that term scale it up or down, you can think about that as shifting uh, sort of the amount of time that something is going to survive. They're a standard regression on the log scale, right? So that's how they can be interpreted at least. And you can parametrically select them based on a corresponding error distribution, right? So you can either set the distribution of T and it gives you a distribution of W, or you can set the error distribution of W and that will imply some distribution for T. And that's more or less what there is to know about accelerated failure time models. So like I said, in the next lecture, I'll go into these details a little bit more and we'll make sure that you know the transformation of the density functions and the hazard uh, makes complete sense for everyone. But other than that, this, premise of just working from location scales is sort of the base of these uh, regression models. So I hope all of that made some sense. Uh, hopefully it clarified anything that was unclear before. But again, if anything is still unclear, please reach out and ask me any questions. All of these slides are online. And uh, if you don't have any, any uh, questions for me, then I'll see you in the next video where we will actually start sort of exploring this in a little bit more depth.